Columbia. You know, you, you gotta keep going. Once it starts to flash red, then he knows he's got about one more bucket to throw on. Then when it's solid red, that truck is full. Now, like here today, we're not gonna hit solid red because our material density is uh, pretty low. But if that wasn't the case, if we were maybe in really wet, cohesive material, and if we were continually overloading that truck, that's gonna really wear up the, or reduce the longevity of that truck over time. So that's something we wanna be aware of. And then, going back to the scenario we talked about earlier, if we don't get enough material on there, we're not gonna hit our production targets, which is never a good deal. So if people are wondering, how many truckloads of dirt did it take to create Operator Stadium here? <laughs> All of them. It took, it took just under 200 loads. Uh, and they moved it in about six hours. The, the contract we used was, was fantastic. Just wow. like all those cat customers are. Well, a lot of people were out here, they saw the uh, Global Operator Challenge Finals that were here the other day on Tuesday. We got to find out who the best in the world was. But if people don't know, how long did this all take as far as training and what you created to put on these demos? Man, that's a great question. So. Uh, these six guys alone, they have about 1,600 hours in preparation for what you're seeing today. And that's, that's just those six, not to mention all the dozens of other folks that Caterpillar has that put their heart and soul into the show. Because we really love our customers, man. We want to show up and highlight it the best we can. And we thought the best way to do that is put previous customers in the machines, showing these guys what they do every day. And it really is shining well, I think. It's cool. I also like, because they're celebrities to us, these things, but a lot of people have seen them because they've gotten to go there, train in Edwards with them, or maybe they've been out to one of their places. So they can be there, and here, so we can make their site people. It's so cool. This is one of my favorite parts, when the 325 climbs its way in, Speedo is working that thing. Wow, man, did you go got to the any closer to that truck? Hey, I, the, this new next gen 325 is exactly what we need for this situation. So, very, very common out on our job sites to be working in tight areas like this. Busy out there. A machine like this, they pre designed that thing so I can get that bucket way up over the cab. It makes my job when I'm working in a single lane of traffic much, much easier. Okay? It takes that operator and uh, just gives me that little peace of mind that you know, I don't have to worry about that bucket very much. We're also loaded up with some technology in this thing, too. So, when I'm uh, out there like breaking load of trucks, I'm able to. Uh, Watch the payload, so just like the loaders had, it will weigh each bucket for me as I put it in that truck. So just giving me that peace of mind, making my life that much easier. Uh, also, if you get a chance, run out and check out that 395 that's sitting out there. Man, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity to get in a machine like that and uh, sit in the cab. Uh, Brian Deal, Brian uh, Spellbreaker out there, they did not answer all the questions you got on the seat. That's a good job there. So definitely one of my new favorite machines is 325 for getting in those tiny areas and getting things done by life. Man, it's so cool. And I know we call you Speedo because uh, apparently he was a track star in high school. No one ever caught him incredibly fast, but he's making short work of that pile over there, Chad. I also noticed the 440 just screws in there in front of you. Tell me more about those seat mounted controls. Yeah, it's pretty handy, man. I guess the best 